Spiritual Teaching 246 Love Each Other 1. Beloved disciples, you have been called to carry out a spiritual mission at this time, so that your spirit be worthy of reaching these positions. He had to go through great trials and rush very bitter chalices, but that crucible gave you temper, evolution and experience. 2. You are the same ones whom in other times I have sought to teach you, but this portion that you form is only a small part of the people of God that is scattered in the universe, and whom I love just as I love you. 3. You all have the same origin, you all have the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you will reach the same end, but I have named my people because you are like older brothers among humanity who have the mission of bringing the seed of love to every spirit. From me you sprouted as a virgin seed and you will return to me as a seed multiplied by an infinite number, but it will have to be clean like the original. 4. This is how the spirits will reach my bosom, great for the development of their gifts and clean for the purity of their works. 5. I have entrusted a part of my work to you because if I did everything, I would not give you an opportunity to perfect yourself. 6. Through the ages I have given you a doctrine that I have been expanding so that it as law governs your human life life, and affirm your spirit on the path that leads to eternal light. 7. From my law which is similar to a tree, men have cut off branches that are sects and religions, which, due to being detached from the tree, have lost their sap, their shade has been scarce and among their foliage there are no nests of love or fruits of good taste. 8. I have not revealed my doctrine to you just so that you may live well on earth. She is the path that leads the spirit to the highest part, to the highest regions of love, wisdom and harmony with all beings. 9. Religions have not fulfilled the mission of leading the spirits towards the threshold of eternity. These, by detaching themselves from this world, lose at the crossroads of death, ignore the way, stumble for lack of light and fall into materialism, looking for the life they left. 10. That is not the path I have traced. My path is one of light, of revelation, of profound wisdom for all, of charity and love. In order not to deviate from it, sacrifice, renunciation and perseverance in the fulfillment of my law. 11. And my spirit, who loves you, has appeared on the path of each of my children, to awaken them to the light of truth and set them on their way to find the tree of life which provides the worker shade and offers good fruits because its sap is perfect. 12. This gives you to understand that times will come when you will have no more shepherd, no more guide than your own consciousness, in which my light shines. 13. In this world there are no sources of true spiritual knowledge. The source of grace and wisdom you will find in me through your humility, in your spiritual communication with the Father. 14. These humble and small enclosures where you enter to have and enjoy my manifestation protect you from the inclement weather and prying eyes, but they can never be the temple of my divinity, because I prefer you look for me in the universe that I have created, where each being is an offering, where each life is a sanctuary and each heart a lamp. 15. Wherever you go and look, you will feel my presence, because my spirit dwells eternally in his temple, where the divine, spiritual and material are linked in perfect harmony to form the sanctuary of God. 16. But not only do I inhabit this temple, but within it are all my creatures, each occupying the home that corresponds to him. 17. Truly I tell you, there is no teacher on earth who can teach you a shorter path and take you farther than this, nor can any show you such a wide horizon whose light makes you contemplate eternity. 18. Eighteenth man has greatly developed his science, but he feels that he is reaching a limit, but it is not that science may have limits, is that I have interposed in his career to make him meditate on his work, to make him hear the voice of your conscience and wait for its rectification. When man applies his science to the good of his brothers, nature's secrets will overflow on him and as a servant she will remain at his feet, because I sent man to earth so that there he rule and be lord over this. Earth. 19. Purification is universal because from the little one who is being born even the one who has reached old age, they drain a cup of bitterness. All the elements and forces are engaged in battle. 20. Legions of spirits of all kinds fight each other, and an atmosphere of war, 
pain and sadness, is breathed everywhere. Be strong, because when this battle is over and the bitter dregs have been drunk, the empty chalice will be filled with the wine of life and will be in all the spirits of the earth as a rebirth. 21. Among those who have learned my lesson by listening to me at this time, there will be those who do not leave their region to carry out their mission, but others will have to rise up after other peoples and other nations. Today I want you to remain listening to my last lessons, so that you carry until the last of my words as an inheritance. 22. Woe to the spokesmen who close their lips before their time. Woe to those who withhold my revelations for want of preparation or inspiration, because afterwards your consciousness will relentlessly claim you. 23. In 1950 I will stop communicating in this way, but your mission will not be over, on the contrary, it will be the beginning of a life of struggle. I will show you a new way of communication, I will speak to your heart, I will communicate with your spirit, I will inspire your mind and thus you will continue to hear the voice of the Divine Master more and more perfect, more higher, more spiritual. 24. After raising my word from among you, no one try to attract my ray to hear my word again, because it does not know what it is exposed to. If in other towns or countries where these teachings are unknown, they came to communicate with the spirit world and invoke my Divine Spirit to hear it through human. Understanding, I will forgive those because they don't know what they are doing. But to you I say, hurry so that my light arrives before the chaos, because a time of confusion is coming in that the wise man will believe that he knows nothing, that many convictions are destroyed and many lamps are extinguished. And in the midst of that whirlwind, my name will go by word of mouth. Mankind will turn its glances to the scriptures in search of prophecies and in search of faith. Theologians, ministers, and men of science will be questioned. And that time that I announce to you and for which I prepare you, it is the same for which you must prepare the new generations, those who must continue your mission, so that my people do not die in you, but grow and multiply in number, in spirituality, in knowledge, and in virtue. 25. The day is coming when I will leave you as teachers, as an example and as a book, because when my doctrine resonates among humanity, my gaze will scrutinize you. 26. Gone are the times when you listened to me without feeling any responsibility, when you ate the fruit and the bread without incurring debt and you drank the wine you wanted until you spilled it and you were happy to find the balsam for your diseases. 27. Now you come with the awakened spirit, now you feel your responsibility. You care for humanity, you suffer for your sick and fight for my cause. And aware that you are witnessing my latest communications, you hasten to hear me and keep my inspirations in your consciousness. You do well to prepare yourself to receive judgment in the last day of this communication. 28. The world will see Israel rise from its ashes, but not the metallic and carnal Jew, but Israel through the Spirit, that by making an appearance among men, will bear witness to the reincarnation of the Spirit, the law of love and justice that will shake foundations, criteria, and beliefs. At first you will provoke struggles and you will originate wars of ideas, but then you will make your peace feel, which even in the moments of greater agitation will make you remain serene and immutable and confusion will pass because spiritual turmoil is never eternal, since at the bottom of each being there is a spark of light that never goes out. 29. Then you will be called to explain what I taught you and give light to destroy the confusion of your brothers. And when the world has penetrated in peace, my kingdom will be close to men, because by my charity you will find yourself ready to untie the seventh seal. 30. Without proclaiming that you are my apostle, you will be. Even though you are teachers, you will say that you are disciples. You shall not wear a garment that distinguish you from others. You will not carry a book in your hands, you will not build enclosures, nor will you have the center or foundation of my work, nor will you have any man to represent me. 31. The guides you have had so far are the last. Prayer, spirituality, and the practice of my doctrine will guide the crowds down the path of light. 32. The moment in which the essence of my word reaches your heart is solemn, leaving a trace of light, is the same that in another time I traced you with the blood of love. 33. The Spirit, in its eagerness to redeem itself, seeks the way at this time and in it finds me, 
me who am the forgiveness and the love that elevates. In truth I tell you, that this love is the force that unites everything created by me. It is the divine breath that gives life and strength to all beings. In the course of your evolution, you have been transforming yourself towards perfection, both spiritually and bodily, although I tell you, that the essential of your being is the spirit, since matter is only a body in which the spirit develops. 34. If through the ages you have lost yourselves, following the inclinations of the flesh, understand now that you have found the path, which you have penetrated in recollection, in which the Father is manifesting himself to the world, so that it achieves salvation. You, in an effort to save yourself, have sometimes come to sacrifice because you understand that sooner or later, but inexorably you will have to penetrate into spiritual life. 35. Do not stop recognizing that this life, sown with beauties and wonders, is great. You cannot deny that man has also put his work in it, which has advanced your way of life. However, the time has come that you turn your eyes to me, to tell me that I am the creator and owner of everything that surrounds you and that I am the light that reveals science to men. Not all have reached this degree of elevation, because not all have understood the times in which they live, nor do they have a notion of the life they have previously had. 36. How can those who surrounded in religious fanaticism, they take away all freedom from the spirit and deprive it of all natural expression? Every spirit has great gifts in itself, since it was before the world, but if he finds himself chained and deprived of expressing what he holds, he will have to live misunderstood and confused, will have to live on forebodings of the spiritual and reminiscences of his own past, hiding and shutting up everything, for the fear that fanatic beliefs have instilled in him about the spiritual. So you will not be able to feel my presence if the word surprises your spirit. How can you have faith in the resurrection of the spirit, which is reincarnation? How can you believe in these manifestations that you now watch? 37. The last moments in which I will speak to you in this way are approaching, and humanity has not given evidence of feeling my presence. 38. How few are those who have known of my communication at this time? How few are those who, in addition to giving credit to my communication through human understanding, have the certainty that the divinity to manifest itself can? Do it in infinite number of ways. But if you, whom I am preparing to be my witnesses, would not give testimony of my manifestation in this time, nature and its elements will speak, and the new generations they will know my work even having not listened to my word. 39. Weigh your responsibility and see that it is still time to take advantage of my teachings, which you know they contain a deep spiritual sense, which marks a path of development for your improvement. Keep in your heart the impression that my essence leaves you and forget that it was manifested through a man, whose lips only expressed my inspiration. 40. You will not teach if you have not practiced it before, because no one will believe you. Men will ask you for evidence I have taught you to give. Of what up to now you can and should know about the Spirit, I have spoken to you. You will add nothing to this word revealed by me. You will continue fighting to be strong of spirit and flesh, because if until now there are diseases among you, it is because you have not known how to rise above the misery and pain of this life, for lack of spirituality and faith. 41. My doctrine not only teaches to have faith in the power of God, but also to have faith in yourselves. Whoever is a true spiritualist can at any time receive in his understanding the pure idea of his Lord, because both in his spirit and in his body there will be dignity. I say to you this day, watch and pray, and may the strength of your thought, raised in prayer to the Heavenly Father, descend and spread like balm over the sufferings of this humanity. 42. Beloved children, here is my divine presence with you, not made man as in the second era, but spiritually. 43. I speak to the group that listens to me. But if you penetrate into my word, you will feel that the Master speaks to each heart. 44. Do not get acquainted with my word. See that she is modeling your spirit so that it affirms its feet in the path. 45. Elijah is the invisible shepherd who guides the sheep to the secure fold, as Moses guided you in the first era, towards the land of promise. 46. When will this lost humanity follow the mark of its shepherd? I will enlighten her to find the way. 
47. The path of which I speak is that of regeneration, that of spirituality, of the practice of charity. May everyone who hears the anguished voice of the sick, the request of the tired and without consolation, open your heart and feel it throbbing with love and pity. 48. It is my wish that you let your spirit manifest in its true essence, so that you may be recognized as apostles of my work. 49. Preparing I meet the new generations who will take a step further along the way. You prepare the path for them. 50. It was your turn to listen to my divine teaching at this time because that is how it was written. The clock struck that each one had to come to recreate under the shadow of the stout tree, where the father dwells awaiting the return of the prodigal son, for whom he always has a look of forgiveness, a welcoming embrace and a smile of love. 51. The light of my divine spirit reaches the depths of the heart through your brain. And on your lips I put my word for you to fulfill the mission that I have entrusted to you. 52. This word is not the work of human fantasy. It is the elevation that the spirit has reached which has brought it closer in this form to me. Because you are understanding my law, and as you develop within it you are reaching greater evolution. 53. Anyone who does not understand me, even having listened to me, it is because he mixes his theories and ideologies of the earth, it is because it confuses spiritualism with dogmatic creeds and religious customs imposed on them by their ancestors. 54. My doctrine does not impose any dogma on you. Your spiritual capacity is the only one that will give you the knowledge of my teaching. You just have to follow that development without stopping until your spirit has reached its perfection. 55. My desire, expressed in my law and in my doctrine, is that men fraternize, that they love each other, that there exist peace in the world, that each man represent me on earth by virtue and examples. 56. I have surprised humanity confused in this third era and I have sent this divine inspiration to call. 57. But I have had to combat their customs and ancient ways of worshipping, because I have already judged them inappropriate for this time, and my struggle has been great with the conservatives of this heritage that is not mine. 58. The doctrine that I have brought you and that I have named a spiritualist is the eternal one, the one that I have always taught you, but truthfully I tell you, whoever has never felt it will not be able to say that he has understood it. 59. You must be delighted, because my coming marks in you a step on the path of spiritual progress. 60. As you are still small and weak, you are not able to contemplate all the greatness that my revelation contains. But you you will develop under my teachings and you will come to set a good example before those who expect you to show with your life the spiritual path that humanity has lost. Do not despair or disappoint them if you reach them only with words and no example, because they will not recognize you as my disciples, you must give testimony of my teaching with your works. 61. How distant are men from understanding spiritual peace who will reign in the world? They try to impose it through force and threats. It is the fruit of their science which they flaunt. 62. It is not that I come to ignore or is against the advances of humanity, because they are also a proof of your spiritual evolution. But I do show you that his display of strength and earthly power is not pleasant before me, because with him, instead of making the cross of humanity light, they outrage the most sacred principles, they threaten lives that do not belong to them and sow pain, tears, mourning and blood, instead of peace, health and well-being. Why if the source from which it takes its science, which is my own creation, who is inexhaustible in love, wisdom, health and life, his works manifest what is contrary. 63. I want equality between my children, as I preached from the second era, but not as men conceive it material only. I inspire you equality through love, making you understand that you are all brothers, children of God. 64. Do not be afraid to bring these revelations to humanity. You will not be taken to martyrdom, because those times are past, although you will be the cause of investigations. 65. Thus I prepare you through the understanding of man. My word has the same essence in all the spokespersons and yes you judge that it is different in everything, it is because you stop in the form and you do not go to the sense. 66. I want to receive your works for the benefit of your brothers. 
I want to contemplate in you the practice of my teachings. How many wonders that amaze men you can do. 67. Fulfill and through your merits, possess the promised land, that promise that will be an eternal reality in you. 68. The son comes before his father in search of warmth. He comes to make him his confidant to deposit in him troubles, bitterness, and concerns. And I really enjoy listening to even the most intimate beat of his heart. To this I approach between you, to give you the light of my teachings so that you may rise up. If I do not come to pour the riches of the earth into your hands, neither do I want you to live in misery. Then you can show a clean example to future generations, when they know that you followed me and regenerated without persecuting petty interests nor fanatically withdraw from your material duties. 69. Build on solid ground, so that what I have raised up of spirituality and regeneration in you, do not come to destroy unbelievers, but do not go into hiding for fear of the world. This truth you will have to show the world in the daylight. At this time you will not look for catacombs to pray and be able to love me. You shall not weaken by speaking or bearing witness of me in some way, because men will deny that I communicated with you, they will doubt that the multitudes of sick and needy healed and found comfort in their sorrows, they will deny the wonders I did to ignite your faith. 70. I will leave you the book of my teachings so that you can say to the world, Here is what the Master bequeathed, and in truth, how many upon hearing my word read, they will believe and how many sinners will regenerate. Remember all these teachings so that the trials in your life do not surprise you. 71. You will continue to impart the bomb throughout your journey. Your word will be sweet consolation for children, young people and elders. And just as you have now been sought after, tomorrow you will continue to be sought after. You will be called by the dying who seeks your help and your words will be like a road or a beacon in the supreme hour of the spirits. My peace be with you.